Jimmy Thing from Maximum PC here at E3 2015. I'm here at uh, Microsoft Suite at the show, speaking with uh, Kudo Sonoda. Hey, how's it going? Uh, and Kudo, and uh, for those that don't know, Kudo is like one of the masterminds behind the you know the Microsoft Connect. And then now you got you're taking over you know the reins of, of the hollow the you know, much anticipated Hololens. Uh, for those that are living that have been living under a rock, can you tell us about Hololens a little bit more? Sure. So I mean, Hololens it's a fully untethered holographic computer um, powered by Windows 10. So what this means is instead of having you know your digital apps, your digital assets locked to the boundaries of screens, we're able to take um, break them out of the screens turn them into holograms and put them right into your real world. And this has some, you know, amazing applications, you know, really changing up the ways people can communicate, the way they can work, the way they can learn. Um, one of the things that we found is that, you know, now that you're actually able to create 3D assets in 3D, um, you can, you know, people can get in, sculpt their own holograms. It's really unlocking people's creativity in a new way. And then obviously we're here at E3, so I'm just finally happy to show off how holograms can really uh, impact the world of gaming as well. Gotcha. I haven't had a chance to try that at E3 yet. I was there at the Windows event um, initially when you guys first revealed it. Um, can you sort of delve into the, you know, I guess uh, talk about some of the specs a little bit, you know, like, or like, you know, when's it coming out, you know, and things like that, how much? Yeah, so, you know, we haven't announced um, a time that we're shipping or a price yet. As okay. far as when it ships, we're saying, you know, it's in the Windows 10 time frame. So it's definitely, you know, not like years in the future. I mean, holograms are something that, you know, I've always thought was, you know, more like science fiction that's going to yeah. happen way in the future. But, you know, we've got, um, you know, working units here at E3. People are seeing holograms today. So it's definitely, you know, um, not years in the future before everyone's going to be able to see holograms. You know, so, like I said, when I tried it at, uh, at the Microsoft event, the Windows event, you know, I was really pleasantly surprised. I was there at the announcement, on you know, and sitting in the, the audience. And when you guys mentioned it, I, you know, I honestly, you know, I clapped. But I, I was like, you know, is this some sort of gimmick? And then I went downstairs in the basement and I got to try it out. And I was just, I was like, wow, this is actually really awesome. Um, but then, you know, I thought to myself, like, this still seems like it's ways out there. Like, I can't really imagine them coming out during the Windows Time 10 frame. But you're saying that it's going to be this year, essentially. So I didn't say, you know, this year. It's not obviously Windows 10 launches at the end of July. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not putting any kind of time frame besides the Windows 10 time frame. But again, it's definitely not, you know, years off into the future. Okay. And then uh, I guess um, one of the complaints that people did have it when they tested it, and like I said, happened right out the new one. But um, FOV, can you talk about the field of the view? the degrees or no sure you know we're not talking specific degrees I think a lot of the times the questions that you know you'll get asked is hey what is the difference between you know mixed reality and virtual reality and you know obviously mixed reality being more of um, blending you know your digital assets with your real world virtual reality being more of a fully immersive experience and so you know you'll get asked lots of time about the FOV hey is the FOV for um, HoloLens ever gonna be this you know fully immersive panoramic kind of view and you know it's not because it's definitely different technologies different things you're trying to do as a, you know wanting to incorporate the real world and the holograms together it, we're not going to build a fully you know immersive digital kind of um, experience like you see with virtual reality so it's different technologies they do different things and then you know we'll have a different field of view for sure okay so you guys haven't locked down like what the final FOV will be that's right Okay, can you, uh, do you know what it is right now? Like what people are seeing at E3, at least? So I don't have like, you know, the exact degrees, you know, okay. in general, it's not like those types of specifications, there's not stuff we're putting out. You know, we really like to stay focused on the experiences and what you can do with the holograms more than, you know, just the tech spec. And I think you can see from, you know, what we've been showing off here, both in the keynote that we had on Monday, um, our Halo experience, the games that we have behind closed doors here, people are having a lot of fun with holograms. Okay, and you know when I tried it at uh, the event, I was really, I was really blown away by the fact that when the Hololens would project something on a table, it, I, I could barely see the table behind it. Can you sort of delve into the secret sauce or like what's going on there? Yeah, I mean it's that? really you know custom optics optics that we build to allow you to see the holograms, and we want the holograms to feel. Um, like they're you know real world objects and mm -hmm. so that's part you know not only what we do visually of just making sure that when we put a hologram into the world that it you know sorts properly with all of the you know f 
real world physical objects, but then also stuff we do with our spatial audio system. So, you know, without having any kind of headphones, we're able to provide you um, with a 360 degree uh, spatial audio soundscape so that when you have holograms behind you and the hologram is making a noise, you can hear the sound coming from behind you with no headphones at all. And so I think those are all parts of the things that we do to make, you know, holograms feel like a part of your real world, something that you can count on as, you know, being persistent in your world and then um, really giving people a fun time uh, having fun playing with holograms. And then to sort of reiterate um, what you guys have said in the past, um, it is going to be a self-contained Windows 10 computer on your head, essentially. That's right. So it's completely untethered. So you have no cords or cables tied to other devices. There's no use of you know any other markers or any other cameras or anything else you have to put in the environment. Everything you need to see and hear holograms is all contained in Microsoft HoloLens. Okay. Uh, have you guys talked about the specs at all? Because I imagine you, you know something like that needs to be needs to be light, but at the same time powerful enough to, and then also, you know, have like the battery longevity. Yeah, you know, one of the big things we had to do, because there are, you know, so many different, um, you know, sensors and pieces of technology and data coming into the device that allows us to have um, the holograms pinned to your real world, that we did have to create, you know, a custom piece of um, silicon, our holographic processing unit. Um, and that's, you know, just one of the great things about working at Microsoft is, you know, you can take problems that are seemingly impossible, um, you know, whether it's like our backward compatibility that we announced for Xbox that's incredibly hard to solve, whether it's putting holograms into your real world. These are all things that when you've got the amazing, like talented um, team of people back at Microsoft, hey, we're able to do these kinds of things and make it happen. So you guys aren't using like uh, like an Intel processor or anything like that? You guys are all fabricating in-house? No, we have one piece of custom silicon called our holographic processing unit. And then, you know, I'm not really talking so much about the particular chips or anything else that we're putting in the device today. Okay, cool. Uh, looking forward to try out, you know, to try out HoloLens at the show later on. Um, you guys are also, you know, Microsoft has been saying for I want, I want to say like the past year or two that you're jumping back into the, the PC space and things like that. And you know, when I first heard about two years ago, you know, I kind of waited and you know, not much happened. But I feel like more recently, you guys are, uh, you know, sort of ju you know jumping onto the you know the PC bandwagon more. And obviously, you guys are making Windows 10 and things like that and DirectX 12. Um, can you sort of talk about that initiative and 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 sort of what was the the turning point? Point. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, with everything that we're doing in Xbox, a big focus is always on providing, you know, high value um, for gamers, you know, finding out from our fans, finding out from the community what gamers really want, what they're looking for. And I think, you know, as far as what we're doing with Windows 10, um, you can see games like so Fable Legends that is enabling um, cross-play between Xbox One and Windows 10 PC. So a game like Fable Legends, it'll ship on both platforms. If you're on Xbox One, you can play with or against people on Windows 10 PCs and vice versa. And I think, you know, that's one of the big pushes is that, you know, gamers want to play games with the people they want to play with. It's, you know, it shouldn't have to matter, oh, are you on PC or are you on console? I think for too long there's been that, you know, PC gaming kind of, um, community and the console gaming community and like they're all people who love playing games they should be able to play games together and I think that's you know one of the big pushes that we're doing with Windows 10 is just trying to bring those communities of people together so we can all play games together and have fun and then also I mean I'm somebody who you know I play games on every device I have I play games on my phone I play games on my console I play games on my PC and you want to be able to like play on these different devices the games that you love and so you know I, when I'm at home I'm definitely you know playing on my big screen TV playing with my console console, but then, you know, sometimes if I'm going to work or, well, no, I'm the, of course I'm not playing games at work as much as I'm <laughs> working, but, you know, if I'm going to work and I've got my Windows 10 PC there, what I'd like to do is like, hey, I'm at home, I'm going to play my, you know, Fable Legends on my console, and now I can go in and start just playing Fable Legends on my Windows 10 PC and have everything that I've earned or anything I've bought while playing um, Fable Legends uh, on my console just work seamlessly on my Windows 10 PC. So I think it's all about, you know, giving gamers choice letting gamers play with the people they want to play with regardless of platform and then also just as a gamer allowing you to play on your console or on your PC and have that just seamlessly work and I think that's the, the stuff that I'm just super excited about with Windows 10 is bringing those community of gamers together and then enabling people to play you know the games that they love um, on multiple platforms. Yeah, and you guys, have, in addition to Fable, you guys have announced a, a couple other titles. I think the, um, you know, the original Gears of War uh, last night. You guys uh, revealed that's right. that that's coming out to, to PC as well. Um, still at the same time, are you guys still testing out the waters a little bit because you know um, the new the new Gears isn't coming to PC as far as I know. Uh, the new Halo Five, which is you know you guys have a Halo, Halo demo for Hololens, but yeah, it's not coming out to PC. So are you guys still like sort of testing out the waters or? Yeah, so it's definitely not testing out the waters. I mean, we are fully committed to gaming on. 
Windows 10. I think, you know, again, not, um, like you're saying, it's not so much even jumping on, you know, the PC bandwagon as much as just knowing that like, hey, gamers, this is something gamers want. This is gonna, you know, add value for gamers and give gamers choice. And that's something we're always super committed to with Xbox. We've announced, you know, Killer Instinct um, coming to Windows mm -hmm. 10 PC, enabling crossplay. You've got Gigantic, um, you know, enabling crossplay coming to both platforms, Fable Legends, you know, the Gears announcement last night. Those are all things that we're talking about here at E3, but certainly that is not the, you know, the last set of news that we're gonna make in Windows 10 and gaming you're going to see more on this as we roll into gamescom okay so so maybe we could see halo and tomb raider and things like that on pc you know again we don't have any announcements <laughs> about that stuff today but for sure there's going to be a lot more um you know a lot more uh announcements coming as we roll towards gamescom okay and then in addition to hololens you guys are you know that's not the only headset in town you guys announced recently that you're partnering with you know valve and, and oculus um you know for the windows platform can you tell us a little bit about that yeah, so, um, you know, great partnership with Oculus. I mean, first of all, it's awesome that, you know, our Xbox One controller is gonna ship with every Oculus Rift at launch. So that just takes our super high precision gaming controller and really puts it in the center of VR gaming. So super happy about that. Plus you're gonna be able to stream um, all Xbox One games to Oculus Rift. So just in the same way that we've talked before about being able to stream your Xbox One games to PC, you're gonna be able to stream those to Oculus Rift as well, play them with your Xbox One controller, and that's gonna be a great experience with Rift. And then, you know, on the Valve side, you know, we've just announced a partnership in looking at, you know, how our teams can start working together to try and find some standardization across the APIs that, you know, are getting built for virtual reality. So I think it's one of the things we want to do with Windows 10 is make Windows 10 the best um, developer platform uh, for virtual reality. And I think we can do a good job of that by getting some, you know, consistent APIs. And then really want to make Windows 10 the best um, VR gaming platform for consumers. I think it was a really smart decision, you know, we, you could could have had a hey uh, Xbox is going to make its own proprietary um, virtual reality device that is going to be tethered to Xbox but then it's like okay that gives consumers no choice it's uh, tied to a single device whereas hey we want to enable you know a great virtual reality experience for all PC gamers and that that means you can choose your own VR device because there are you know multiple ones of them work with um, Windows 10 and then as we try and make life easier for developers by getting some consistent APIs built that's going to allow the developers to not have to focus on solving technical problems but to really focus on making their experiences better and I think that's better for developers that's better for consumers and you know really makes Windows 10 the the center and place to be for um, virtual reality gaming okay uh, I mean the, you know Microsoft you know um you, you guys obviously have a lot of smart engineers and designers and things like that. Does it kill some of the team to not be able to make their own VR headset? Because like, it seems like everybody's getting into, into that now. I mean, not at all. I think the stuff that Microsoft is doing really well these days is like, you know, one, just par um, partnering with different companies and enabling awesome companies to do great work. So, you know, as much as there are talented, super talented engineers and designers, you know, within Microsoft, and there are super talented engineers and designers in uh, different industries all over the world. And, you know, Microsoft has a great history of working with Windows to really enable other people to do amazing work. And I think that's one of the things we're super focused on is building these great partnerships where Windows 10 can help people to build their own amazing products. Um, and then I think, you know, still you see areas where Microsoft is also really pushing the boundaries of innovation. I mean, when you're talking about stuff like, hey, we're making a, you know, untethered holographic computer, um, we're also pushing the boundaries in the products and in the spaces that, you know, really take a high level of uh, innovative work as well. So I think it's kind of, you know, we do both of those things really good as a company right now. You know, you don't have to do um, every piece of work all yourself. A lot of what we want to do with Windows is um, enable partners to build great products, but then also it enables us to go off and do things like build holographic computers, make awesome um, Xbox games. You know, we still really push the boundaries of innovation in a lot of areas. Okay, uh, you, you know, considering you're, you know I, don't know, I don't know if it's fair to say, the mastermind behind HoloLens or one of the leading visionaries behind it. Do you think that, let's say in a couple of years time, we might see a hybrid solution between AR and VR? It seems like that would make sense to me. So, I mean, again, I think they're very complementary technologies with different goals. And so I think, you know, on some level, there's some similar problems and there'll be some um, amount of things that, you know, uh, both of mixed reality and virtual reality uh, do or solve in the same way. But I, you know, fundamentally believe that they are complementary technologies. I don't think it has to like all, you know, boil down into one thing. I think virtual reality does a great job of, you know, transporting you to these amazing, fully immersive digital environments. And then holograms and mixed reality does a great job of blending 
blending the real world with the digital world. And so I don't necessarily think everything has to, you know, eventually clump together as one thing. It's great to have um, both of those products. And I mean, you know, what there's no better time to be a gamer. I mean, we could, you know, you're able to have great console games, you're able to have great PC games, you're able to have great virtual reality games, and you're able to have great games with holograms. It's just a fun time to be playing games. Cool. And then just going back to the the PC and, and Steam relationship a little bit, um, you know, it, a part of me always wonders, like, you know, with PC gaming being so huge it is today, you know, with games like Dota and, and Counter Strike and things like that, does Microsoft at all feel um, like they kind of missed the the, the boat on that one a little bit kind of dropped the ball a little bit um, in the past well I do think obviously PC gaming is just a huge thriving community of super avid gamers and you know I think us at Xbox we're always wanting to provide high value for you know fans of gaming and be able to provide the best gaming experience as possible regardless of where you want to play and I think that's why you see just such a big push with um, you know, Windows 10, it's something that gaming fans want to see the PC gaming community and the console gaming community come together. I think people really want to be able to play, you know, like I do on multiple devices. And so, you know, that stuff we're just really focused on is giving gamers choice, giving them great gameplay experiences regardless of what platform they're on. And then just making sure as you have people able to play on multiple platforms that you can now bring those communities and groups of people together so all gamers can have fun playing together regardless of what platform you're on. Okay. I think a lot of PC gamers, you know, our audience, uh, there's a, I guess there's, for the PC crowd, the enthusiast PC crowd, there's a stigma against the, the Xbox name, and, uh, you know, Microsoft's trying to bring that over, and, and uh, there is that stigma, like I said, and Microsoft has sort of tried to get into the PC space a little bit with the games for Windows Live, which uh, a lot of people, you know, didn't really like, and then, you know, Microsoft eventually did away with that. Uh, you know, is the Xbox initiative on Windows 10, like, how is it going to be different than, than what Microsoft has tried in the past in the PC space? Well, I think, you know, we're just fully committed to Windows 10 gaming. I think you can see that with the products that we're we're building now. I think we're doing a you know a really good job of not just having a console gaming you know business over here and then a PC gaming business over here. I think it really helps to just combine you know those together and allow people to play together regardless of platform. I think you know everybody it's it's a fair question to you know um, say hey we haven't done the best job on PC gaming in the past but like you're gonna see a lot of announcements for what we're doing with PC games going forward. I think people will be really surprised and delighted with our plans and how committed we are to Windows 10 gaming. That's gotcha. it. I mean, it, it, like from my perspective, you guys are, you know, pushing the Xbox platform, so it makes sense, uh, you know, pushing it as as your gaming thing. So it makes sense to be able to push that platform. Is it then? Is it sort of a conflict of interest? Because like maybe you can make, you know, your your profit margins a little bit higher for Xbox titles, or yeah, I don't think. You know, it's not a conflict of interest. It's, you know, much more about we have one sole um, thing that we are motivated by, and that's like doing good by gamers, providing gamers great gameplay experiences, and making sure that the things that are of high value to gamers we're delivering on, regardless of platform. And I think, you know, if there's anything that the Xbox brand stands for, it really is, is, you know, doing right by our fans, listening to fan and gamer feedback, and making sure the products we're delivering for gamers are delightful and provide high value for their gaming dollar. And I think, you know, that's what we're focused on both with our console gaming and our PC gaming initiatives um, and I think you're going to see a lot more about what we're doing with Windows 10 and start getting to Gamescom. I see, guys. And then uh, are you guys going to be you know, working more with Valve as opposed to competing with them? Um, which was sort of you know what games for windows live was kind of doing or well has you know, it like we said earlier you know we made an announcement in the you know virtual reality space as right. far as a partnership with valve mm -hmm. i think again microsoft is very committed to working with all of our different partners but we don't have anything else that we're announcing today around uh partnerships with valve okay and then uh, just the one, one last thing you guys uh, announced recently uh the new xbox elite controller yeah which is uh you know 150 dollars lots of people are saying the controller looks cool i haven't had a chance to play with it myself but it is on the pricey end uh, it kind of reminds me of you know in the PC space, lots of people have you know enthusiast mechanical keyboards, and and you know like high DPI like uh, sensitive gaming mice. Did you guys take inspiration from from that? Yeah, you know what I think the best part is, and you know it's consistent themes around things we're trying to do with Xbox about. You know, giving people, giving gamers choice, allowing them to play how they want to play. I thought, you know, Phil Spencer said it great in our keynote. It's not just what you're playing, but how you play is just as important. And really, the great thing about that controller is it allows you to customize the gameplay experience for the way that you, you know, you as an individual want to play. And I love our, you know, Xbox One controller, but just being able to have a controller that I can customize for the way that I like to play games, for the style of games and the type of games that I'm playing. 
you know, I think that it's uh, great for enthusiasts, but it's great for anybody who likes customization, who likes personalizing the experience around themselves. I think it's going to appeal to um, obviously our you know high-end enthusiast gamers, but to a lot of other gamers as well. Okay, and then like, can you just address the you know the the the, the price? I guess the hundred fifty dollars. It's almost like the you know half the price of the the console itself, right? Yeah, so that price that you said is correct, yes. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Cool, all right, thank you for your time. Thanks, man. Yep.